Business meeting to order. Today, the committee will consider eight bills, S-195, Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Lands Land Claim Settlement Act of 2023, S-382, Puyallup Tribe of Indians Land into Trust Conf uh, Confirmation Act of 2023, S-910, a bill to amend the Grand Ron Reservation Act and for other purposes, S-1286, a bill to amend the Sillets Reservation Act to address the hunting, fishing, trapping, and animal gathering activities of the Confederated Tribes of Sillets Indians and for other purposes, S-1322, Unlocking Native Lands and Opportunities for Commerce and Key Economic Development, Unlocked Act, S-1987, Fort Belknap Indian Community Water Rights Settlement Act of 2023, S-2273, a bill to amend the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act, and S-2285, a bill to reauthorize the Native American Housing Assistance and Self-Determination Act of 1996. S-195 was introduced by Senators Peters and Stabenow, and the bill would acknowledge the uncompensated taking by the federal government of the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Lands provide compensation for the taking of those lands and extinguish all of the tribe's claims to those lands in exchange for the provided compensation. S-382 was introduced by Senator Cantwell and Senator Murray. The bill would transfer into trust three separate parcels, totaling approximately 17.264 acres, currently owned in fee simple by the Puyallup tribe. S-910 was introduced by Senators Merkley and Wyden. This bill would provide the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde the ability to pursue land claims in the state of Oregon following the termination of that right under a 1994 amendment to the Grand Ronde Reservation Act. S-1286 was introduced by Senator Merkley and Wyden. This bill would authorize the Sowets Tribe in the state of Oregon to replace, amend, or otherwise modify the hunting, fishing, gathering, and trapping rights of the tribe through a new government-to-government -government agreement. Senator Murkowski and I introduced s 1322, a bill to amend the Long-Term Leasing Act to authorize all federally recognized, recognized tribes to issue leases of up to 99 years and expand the Tribal Hearth Act authority to rights of way. S. 1987 was introduced by Senators Tester and Danes. This bill would authorize and ratify the Water Rights Compact entered into by the Fort Belknap Indian Community, the United States, and the state of Montana in 2001. The act would also transfer certain lands into trust for the tribe, providing critical water infrastructure and funding, settle the tribe's water rights claims against the United States, and provide mitigation measures for non-Indian water users. S-2273 was introduced by Senators Lujan and Collins. This bill would modernize and reauthorize three programs established by the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act. The Indian Child Abuse Treatment Grant Center, the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Program, and the National Indian Resources Services Centers. The final bill the committee will consider is S-2285, introduced by myself and Senator Murkowski. This bill would make programmatic improvements to the Native American Housing and Self-Determination Act and reauthorize it for a period of 10 years. I'll now turn to the vice chair for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that we have these eight bills before the committee today. As members of this committee, we're very familiar with the many ways tribes and native peoples across the country have faced injustices at the hands of the federal government. And I think the bills before us today will take some steps to rectify some of these injustices, whether they are restoring homelands for the Puyallup tribe, uh, restoring the ability of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde uh, to pursue land claims in Oregon, settling the land claims uh, for the Keweenaw um, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, I'm glad to see the progress on legislation that will protect tribal sovereignty, create economic opportunities for tribes and their surrounding communities. Also very proud to co-lead the Unlocked Act with you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to amend the Long-Term Leasing Act uh, of 1955 to authorize leases of up to 99 years, reducing some of the red tape there at, at BIA. Uh, I also want to mention our Nahasda bill, which has long had bipartisan support. Housing is the probably the number one issue that I hear about in my state as I travel around, and I know that in, in colleagues' uh, states as well, we hear about this as a priority. The last bill I want to mention from our agenda is the Fort Belknap 
um, water rights settlement. As I mentioned at the, at the initial hearing, it features a historic settlement with broad support, including from both of our colleagues here on the committee, Senator Dane, Senator Tester, uh, the governor of, of Montana. It, there has been considerable work that has gone into this, obviously considerable uh, history. It is an important bill. I think we're moving forward with it um, at, at great speed, although the sponsors of that would say, we've been working on this for a decade. There's nothing lightning about it. But I do think that it is important that we are at this place, that we're being able to advance it through the committee. I think we want to facilitate the tribe's settlement and the security that the wet water brings to the community. We are riding a long overdue injustice for Fort Belknap, and I think that that is important, but I can't help be reminded in reviewing and, and working through this settlement that other injustices have gone unresolved in other areas and certainly in my home state for Native people. In 1971, we passed ANCSA, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. Some Clinket and Haida communities in Southeast were left out of that. They were just left out. We call them the landless. Uh, I've been working to get them the lands that they're entitled to, which are now managed by the Forest Service been working on this since I came to the Senate. The landless people have been told over and over again by outside groups and by the federal government that the Tongass National Forest is too special to allow them to select lands. We've made maps to identify the parcels, um, but still the landless are left waiting. They're effectively being punished because of where their homelands are located. I've also been fighting, again since I came to the Senate, to get our Alaska Native Vietnam veterans the lands that they are owed. There are more than 500 Alaska Native veterans in the Tongass, but they cannot select a single acre in the Tongass National Forest for allotments, even though it's where their people have lived and have fished and have hunted since time immemorial. This is literally where the allotments are supposed to be for them, but it's not being allowed because the National Forest System lands are just, quote, too special. And Congress has placed all 16 million acres off limits for these allotments. In the Fort Belknap settlement, in order to ensure that the Fort Belknap community gets the lands they're entitled to within their reservations, we're putting all of the National Forest System acres in Montana on the table for exchanges with the state, with very few exceptions. And I think that that's significant. And believe me, I, I'm, I'm supporting this, again, because of the efforts that have gone forward. But I, I do have a hard time in understanding why there's kind of a double standard that we're seeing here. Um, we're going to allow this in Montana. I think that's important. We've been asking for it in Alaska for, for decades now, and it seems like it's a hard no. And I, I, I can't help but think that it seems like we're – we're being placed a little bit in a snow globe in Alaska where nothing can change on federal lands, no matter the reason, even if we're trying to address historic injustice or something we owe to our Native veterans. All we're trying to do here is get the same deference to right the wrongs for Alaska Native people. So I would encourage my college, colleagues, if we're going to support the Fort Belknap bill today, as I believe we absolutely should, I would hope that you'll be there for us when we ask for some help in resolving similar issues in Alaska. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for all the hard work that's gone into all of these bills by our members and our staff on the committees. I'm looking forward to advancing them and to getting them to the floor for full consideration. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair. Your point is uh, very well taken, and um, let's work together on that. Are there other senators wishing to make an opening statement? Senator Tester. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank uh, you and the vice chair for their statements. And I also want to thank you for holding the business meeting that includes the Fort Bad Belknap Indian Community Water Settlement Act of 2023. I want to uh, thank your staff, the folks that make us look really good for you, Chairman Schatz, it was Jennifer, Brianne, and Darren. For you, Vice Chair Murkowski, it's Amber, Lucy, and Nick. And I just want to thank you guys for hiring top light folks to, to help this committee move um, I also want to thank them for Belknap Indian Tribe. Uh, the president was here in front of us, did a nice job. Um, special thanks to the state of Montana, in particular, Lieutenant Governor Juris, who is a water attorney, which always helps uh, when you're doing negotiations. And so it, it, it's good. Look, this bipartisan settlement we're voting on today it's not been years of negotiation, it's been decades between tribe, local elected officials, irrigators, state legislators, federal agencies, and other stakeholders, including the folks on this committee that I just mentioned. 
to hammer out a fair compromise that honors the trust and treaty responsibilities while guaranteeing water certainty, not only for the tribe, but all of North Central Montana. Uh, if this day goes as I hope it does, it will be a historic day for the Fort Belknap Indian community and folks all across North Central Montana. It will give them the water certainty they need. And to put it simply, as I said a couple of weeks ago, water is life. I said before, this is the last Indian water settlement left to be finalized in the state of Montana. And I can tell you that Senator Danes and I are very happy about that. Okay. Uh, so we got to get it done. We make promises and in Montana. We find common ground. And we live up to those promises. So uh, once again, thank you guys. You know why we need to get this done. And I look forward to this committee taking a crucial step today. One of many more that has to happen. So thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Daines. Chairman Schatz, thank you. And Vice Chair Murkowski, um, thank you as well. And your, your points are, are taken. And, uh, and thanks for uh, your willingness to continue to move this forward. And whenever there's other things that aren't yet resolved, as you pointed out, but uh, thank you for can you support our efforts in going forward to get this uh, historic agreement approved. And to the staff as well, uh, this is um, a big deal for, uh, for Montana. It's a big deal for our country. And I, too, as Senator Tester mentioned, want to thank Lieutenant Governor Juris and her staff. It is nice to have a water rights attorney as a Lieutenant Governor. She is a, certainly a subject matter expert on the topic. And also for President Stiff Arms, courage, boldness, leadership to resolve what would have been a century-long dispute that we are now within um, a clear range of getting resolved and completed. And I want to thank Senator Tester and staff for the many late nights, the phone calls we've had to reach this agreement. Uh, the teams are working literally through the weekend to get those last few items uh, sorted out, and they were successful in doing so. Uh, this is a historic step for Montana. It is a bipartisan, a bipartisan agreement, the Fort Belknap Water Rights Compact, the last compact for the state of Montana. We're now one step closer to getting this to President Biden's desk. A lot of work's gone on over a century, a lot of work over a decade, but a lot of work over the last six months and this last week to get to where we're at here today. This bill supports tribal and non-tribal farmers and ranchers. It supplies safe and clean drinking water for the tribe. It solidifies water rights for tribal and non-tribal water users and importantly invest in infrastructure for thousands of Montanans on the High Line. There's a lot of work left to do, but this is a really important day, an important milestone. I look forward to working with my colleagues to get this bill across the finish line and inked. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, to both of the senators from Montana. Without objection, we'll permit members to submit additional statements for the record. Uh, Thank you, uh, the Senators Catwell and others will su submit statements for the record. Um, uh, and without objection, the committee will proceed to consider the bills S-195, S-382, S-910, S-1286, S-2273 and block. Is there any discussion? Without objection, the, com the, the, the committee will vote by voice to report the bills on block. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. And S-195, 382, 910, 1286, and 2273 are ordered reported favorably without amendment. Now I'll turn to the amendments and the remaining bills in the agenda. Three amendments were filed, two of which were not timely. Committee Rule 5C requires 48-hour notice of amendments to be considered in advance of a business meeting. This rule may be waived by the chair with the concurrence of the vice chair. Does the vice chair concur? I do. Thank you. So without objection, I'll call up S-1322 with amendment number NEW-23636 and S-1987 with amendment number KAT-23755 and S-2285 with amendment number MIR-23995. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the committee will vote by voice to report the bills as amended. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Uh, the ayes have it, and S-1322, S-1987, and S-2285 are ordered reported favorably, each with an amendment. I want to thank the members for getting the business of our committee completed expeditiously, and I ask unanimous consent that the staff be allowed to make technical and conforming changes. There being no objections or further business before us, 
This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, guys.